gift, because I am the gift giver, I am the gift, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We receive that word. Hallelujah. How many receive that word? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That we humble ourselves, Lord. There's lightnings and there's thunders, and they're even before us now, above us. And the angels, the great warring angels, these mighty hosts of heaven, they're marching like you've never known before wow. with great weapons in their hands. Know that wow. I'm sending them out with legions. Legions, he says. Legions. He says, legions of great and mighty hosts of heaven. And they're coming, and they're going to walk alongside of us. They're going to help us to fulfill our destinies on the earth, to, feel the, to fulfill the Father's plan on this earth. Do not look at the things that are happening in the news or in the world, but look to me, because I have a plan. I have a destiny. I have everything that you possibly can hope or want. It's already there for you, but it's for you to know how to receive it and get it and bring it forth. I am the great teacher. I give every good gift. I don't give bad things. I don't give bad reports. I don't give away wickedness. I give away hope and life. I give away love and grace and mercy. I'm long-suffering and I'm strong and I'm valid. I can do all things. I have already put the enemy under my foot, says the Lord. I can see it. Here to the Lord, right? Hallelujah. And there's a new season coming and I... I I'm not going to really speak on it yet, but there's new strength coming. An increase is going to come. I heard that very word, uh, increase is coming. Hallelujah. Just let that hit you by the Spirit. Increase. Kingdom increase. Exponential increase. The knowledge of His glory is going to just fill the earth, right? And just what the devil's doing, God's going to just flood it out, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Turn everything around for good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so, this is what's burning in my spirit. It says, Revelation 12, 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Oh man, please hear that. It's so powerful. There should be something uh, in our voice uh, something of Jesus produced by the blood of the Lamb that causes us to overcome. How many want to see more of that? And the Lord is instilling something in the body of Christ right now that uh, we haven't seen for generations. There's going to be a group of people that uh, generations haven't seen in centuries is going to rise up and a fire is going to go before them, right? Hallelujah. And uh, it's going to change. The, oh, the devil's in trouble. That's all I got to say. He's in trouble. <laughs> he's already a goner. He just doesn't know it yet, but he's a goner. Hallelujah. And so it says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. And I want to just decree to you there's power in the blood of Jesus. How many can just say there's power in the blood? Oh, man, he wants to awaken us to, to the power of his blood. And uh, I think I'll just start off with a testimony. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Tell him hello. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll, I'm going to share this. And um, this is somebody that's in this room, this testimony. This is a real deal. It was about a year and a half ago that my daughter decided to really get serious about the Lord and she's sitting right there not that she hadn't been in church she's been going to church and we've been dragging her to church and all kinds of things and she's a believer she's born again but something stirred in her the Lord's stirring people right now I believe to really step into their giftings their callings right and they, they don't oh man but they don't know what's going to happen sometimes it happens when you step into it and she stepped in and she has a gift of worship and a heart for the youth and she started stepping through that door and and I'll just say there was a there's a there is a real anointing working in her life and we were blessed when we heard her singing the song solo and wow and uh, and it just seemed like in the in the youth were being drawn there and that God's doing something 
It's, this youth ministry is going to start taking off. Hallelujah. Pray for the youth. We need to reach the youth in this generation. There needs to be another Jesus movement, but for the youth, right? Hallelujah. Anyways, um, and so what happened, it just seemed like, and I, tell me if I'm wrong here, but it seemed like from nowhere, things started happening to her that she had never encountered before. I mean, she started having anxiety. I mean, just out of the blue. Is that right? Anxiety? And her heart started racing. I mean, she thought she was going to die several times. Is that right? You went to the hospital numerous times because your heart rate got so elevated that it was dangerous. And I mean, it's just crazy thing. She's never had any any symptoms of that ever. Oh wow! And not only that, but then her throat. She was starting to sing. What happened to your throat? You started getting pain in your throat. Is that right? Isn't that crazy? Your thyroid started acting up, and then you started having hot flashes. Right? Oh man! And she's only in her twenties. And time after time, she went to the doctor. And, uh, and they couldn't really find anything wrong with her physically, right? They thought there was something mentally or something. They were going to put you on all this medication. And a lot of people, please hear me, I'm not trying to come against medication. Thank God for the doctors and what they can do. But you know what? You can, you can rise above that even and break free where you don't need medication. And they were trying to put her on all this stuff. And we said, you know what, this is, this is an attack of the enemy. There's a connection with you stepping out, and she knew it too. Is that right? And then so we said, why don't you just put the word in, right? Try the word. Take the gospel, right, instead of, <laughs> instead of something else. And so she decided to do that. And so we started to really, I mean, she heard us preach this. How I many know you can hear things over and over and over uh, but until you really step into it and appropriate it, apply it in your own life, it, it's different, right? And so she started putting the word in. We gave her some specific scriptures, and one of them was James 4.7. Is that right? James 4.7, submit yourself to the Lord, right, to God. Humble yourself, right? In other words, we got we to gotta put him first in spite of what is going on around us. doesn't matter. I mean, this is the word. How many believe this is the word of God? That, that we need to believe the word over everything else, no matter what. So that's a key. And she was shaking in her boots. I mean, she didn't have boots on, but she was, I mean, she, you, she was trembling literally with fear. And there was stuff in her voice. You could hear it. How many know what I'm talking about? And uh, it seemed like she was speaking and and there was nothing really happening at first. Is that right? For a little season, right? And what we just tell her, just keep on keeping on, keep on speaking, keep meditating on the word, acting like it's true, believing it's true, and just speak to these things in the name of Jesus, right? And so that's what she did. And she was trembling, and this was a serious issue. And it's still, she's coming out of it. And, uh, oh man. But I, I think the key is, is, is putting God first. That's a key. And please hear me, it talks about this in Scripture too. Um, it says in Philippians 2, 12 and 13 that, that we're to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, right? And uh, we need to put the Lord first, right? The, the, this is, this, there's, God wants to instill this power in us where when we speak, there's going to be something of Jesus, what he did on the cross, that's going to cause the enemy to run. I mean, in terror, to flee. I mean, Jesus really did destroy the enemy, right? And so that's what has to be established in our life. And it's more than just quoting the scripture. It's more than quoting the Psalms, 23rd Psalm, or whatever scripture it is. It's about knowing the, the author. That's what makes all the difference when you know him, right? right. Empowers you, right? And it's power in the blood of Jesus. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Oh, man. And so I guess she discovered, well, she, she really wasn't, uh, you know, close like she thought she was, right? You thought you were okay, right? You thought 
just like a lot of other people, and please hear me, this is not an uncommon thing. I bring this out for a reason. I spoke this out on the national television that, that the God is calling us to rise up, but realize you're going to have to deal with some stuff. Bear in mind, we're not dealing with one another after the, after, you know, it, when we deal with one another, we've got to walk in compassion and love, right? But when it comes to dealing with the enemy, he needs to be dealt with, right? God wants us to deal with him. He's already defeated him, right? I mean, it was like the devil was tossing her to and fro like a reed, destroying you, still kill, I mean, attacking you spirit, soul, and body. Is that the truth? Oh, man, it was, and she's, something's happening to her, though. And just about a week ago, she was right here reading the, our little Bible study. We were talking about uh, the power of prayer and all this from, from Rhema. And uh, I started noticing something on her voice. And um, I started noticing the sound of victory. I'm noticing in other voices in here too, the sound of confidence, the, the, the sound of what Jesus did for us on the, on the cross that we're no longer defeated. And, and there is something uh, that God wants us all to make. And that's the sound, the same sound that Jesus made, right? Hallelujah. And, and so that's what he's instilling in her life. But, but it took her about a year and a half to, to get into this place where she's like another woman. I mean, she's a devil destroyer now. She's manifesting, right? I mean, all those symptoms. I mean, she's still dealing with stuff. I mean, you live by faith. You're going to be dealing with stuff. Faith overcomes. Everywhere you go, yes, you get to walk in and love and peace. What does peace do? It crushes the enemy, right? Just release Jesus everywhere you go. That's how you deal with the enemy. You release Jesus. And, uh, and what does it say? For this purpose was Jesus made manifest that he might, what? Destroy the works of the devil. And that's what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to, to deal with the works of the enemy. Whether it's... Uh, something evil coming at us or something in our own life. And I'm telling you what, a lot of people aren't overcoming because they're not rising up, they're not submitting, they're not resisting. The power comes in resisting. How many know that? We all know that. And that script is a scriptural principle. There's an impartation of something of Jesus, of, of, of what he did on the cross, his resurrection, when we stand and we believe the word and we resist the enemy with the scripture with the word with Jesus he's the same yesterday today and forever everybody knows these things right and so last time I was here we were talking about the anointing the prophetic anointing and um, and and Elijah how many like Elijah and I tell you <laughs> there was something in Elijah's voice that um, when he went to the wicked king Ahab in, in 1 Kings 17 verse 1 he says as the Lord God liveth in whose presence I am in right or I stand it shall not rain these years but by my word right there was something coming out of him that I believe caused that, that kingdom in that day to shake and to tremble I mean I was talking to Dave last week and in Stockton there he was there last week and and I was thinking of Elisha you know some people were poking at him I'm not poking at you brother I'm not poking at you because he's a he's very prophetic but I mean there was something that when they poked at Elisha in that day that oh man it was bad right I mean these guys were walking and something what was it I'm suggesting to you we had a little manifestation of the fear of the Lord right here in this room tonight and we've been in some meetings where the whole place, I mean, the whole place in some of our healing services was on their knees. I mean, the Holy Spirit came in. There was a spirit of reverence. I mean, you didn't have to tell anybody that the Lord would, everybody was on their knee. It was more people in, in that meeting than was in this room, maybe. And we're all on our knees. Praise the Lord, humble in our, because God was there. And these guys were releasing that everywhere they went they had that powerful anointing and so and so in the scriptures it says 
uh, you know, that we have the gift of prophecy, right? And please hear me, Jesus, these Old Testament prophets and all this stuff was pointing to Jesus. It was fulfilled in Jesus. And we have it. We have access into all of it. We have the testimony of Jesus. It is a spirit of prophecy, right? That's what it says, right? And it's more the anointing and the prophetic. The gifts are more than just to, to comfort people with words of knowledge or give them guidance or, or to heal them. But I'm suggesting to you a major part purpose of the anointing is to manifest Jesus. That's how you deal with the devil. You manifest Jesus, right? And that's what we're talking about, how to manifest Jesus. These people in Scripture, how many believe we may be part of that group? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, right? We're part of that group. And I'm believing for the Lord to release some revelation here, some real grace here to impact you, to just to, I mean, just cause you to, to press in. I mean, if she didn't press in, she would be still where she was, defeated. But now you're not, are you? Did you all those things get pushed back because of the word, right? I mean, there's some crazy things that happened, and, and they're all gone. It's amazing. I, we could go on and on with that. I'm telling you what, that can happen in your life. It is happening. And we're seeing it all over. And the Lord wants to awaken us to the power of the blood of Jesus. And I want to share a real uh, revelation here. There's a real revelation, and you can see some of this in the book of 1 John. Let's look at 1 John here. 1 John chapter 1. Hallelujah. I wanted to stir you up here. I think the Lord has got me stirred up. This is, this is serious stuff here. Man. The church is going to rise up we're not going to be defeated. We're not going to be dormant. We're going to be proactive, pushing back, advancing, taking back the territory, right? Hallelujah. Speaking those words, those decrees, sister. Like, I mean, Elijah said, it's not going to rain, but by my word. What do we got the power to do? Doesn't it say in Matthew 16, 18, and 19 that Jesus gives us the keys of the kingdom that we can bind and, and loose, right? Wow. By my word, you know. Devil, you're not going to destroy my life, right? By my word, sin, you get out of my life, right? Resist the devil and he will flee. And we need to have the heart for what God has the heart for. I'm not saying that you don't, but I'm just, I'm speaking in general. Even the church has turned it's, it's turned away from the enemy. They don't even want to acknowledge that there is an enemy. Many places don't believe there, there is even. It's crazy. And, uh, and, and they don't deal with sin. They're compromising. They're making ways for the enemy to come right in to the church and just put them in prison and bondage. And a lot of crazy religious doctrines are coming in and it's putting people captive. And uh, I'm telling you what, we may be more the enemy may have made inroads in our lives more than we may realize, but, but we just have to believe the word, act like it's true, no matter what, and get in the right place with God, and you're going to see that power come, and you're going to see a shift. How many believe that? How many need some more shift? Oh, man, I'm all stirred up here. I'm not ready to, to cut loose like Dave yet, but I'm going to hang around him. He's having an impact on me. Yeah, guy, man, he cut loose in Stockton today on tape. I'm going to put him on our network. I keep saying that, but I'm going to do it this week. I'm going to, I'm going to be on there. And so, man, doesn't it say that, that we have overcome the enemy, right? Doesn't it say in 1 John chapter 5 that he who has been born again overcomes, right? How do we overcome? by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, right? That's part of it. Didn't you have to just meditate on the word? Didn't you have to decree the word? Job twenty-two twenty-eight. that is an eternal truth. You shall decree a thing, decree the word, what God has said, right? And it shall be established. That's how we, we make that which is recorded in heaven a reality here in our life and in the world 
uh, it says in Psalms 119, 89, the word of God is forever settled in heaven. It's, it's already there. It is a, it's like a law, right? There's a record in heaven. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established and a light shall shine upon your ways. And that's exactly what she did and it made a way for her to go. And uh, step by step, you started having breakthrough. And now you have a, a closer relationship with the Lord. Is that right? Where, where you, you know something, right? You know the author now. It's different when you know the author, right? Hallelujah. I'm expecting big things out of her. Hallelujah. And so, where was First John, right? First John. Okay. Chapter 1. And again, this is the apostle... When he wrote this, he was a seasoned brother in the Lord. I mean, he was like in his 90s, right? And, but he knew Jesus on the other side of the cross. Right? He knew him. He had a relationship with him. And this is, this is the theme here. He wants us to, to enter into that relationship. He wants us to know him. And just knowing him before, he, Jesus was the, the Word made flesh. Just knowing him in that relationship before the cross even they were empowered to just trample the devil and do all kinds of things that Jesus was doing just by knowing him isn't that amazing and so here here what he says here and he's trying to to get our attention here in this passage this chapter is an awesome chapter it says that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, our hands have handled of the word of life. Please hear that, the word of life. Zoe, that's what it says in, in, in the original, huh, brother? Zoe, the God kind of life. It's literally an awesome manifestation of the presence of the Lord. This is some, some of what the, the, those prophets were walking in as well, too. Jesus says, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life, right? The flesh profits nothing, but the spirit quickens, John 6, 63. In other words, when you have the quickening of the spirit and you start decreeing and speaking, there's going to be a quickening, it's going to be a reproduction of that word in your life, uh, the testimony of Jesus, the witness of Jesus is going to bear witness through your life, and that the spirit of prophecy is going to come. It's going to, it's going to bless people, and it's going to destroy the enemy at the same time. Isn't that something? I mean, we need that. We need these gifts. We need people are down on the the gifts of the spirit, prophecy. Well, you need it right there. It tells I mean, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right. Hallelujah. And so they knew him, the word of life. And then it goes on to say, for the life was manifested. And we have seen it. It changed them, right? Empowered them to bear witness himself. It brought them into a whole new dimension. And bear witness and show unto you. When they bore witness, it was different than what we may do in, a, in the world, right? Right? Or when we're not living by faith, not not any of you guys, right? But <laughs> but when he they bore witness, there was something that empowered them to to change things, to turn their world, their generation upside down, to see people come out of darkness and into the light as well, right? There was a drawing, there was something of Jesus operating through their witness. And they wrote in such a fashion that it's from another realm, these words. The Logos, this is something God has decreed and it's connected to his presence. And if we'll just learn how to, to enter into this witness, this testimony, the power of his blood, it's going to transform you. What we're saying today, catching it by the Spirit can change your life. Hallelujah. Man, that's changing my life. And every time I get around that guy, I get changed even more. So pretty I like that guy, yeah. Hallelujah. Okay, so the life was manifested. We have seen it. And again, this was on the other side of the cross. And now we're on this side of the cross, right? And it says in Scripture, I won't go to the verses, but it says we're not even to know 
each other anymore after the flesh because he is no longer in the flesh. He's in the heavenly realm, right? We're to know one another after the spirit now. Our relationship, if we're not relating to one another after the spirit, we're living below the standard that, that Jesus made for all of us. And God's calling us into a higher way of, of relationship. And that relationship's going to bear witness. You're going to have a witness, something of Jesus, of who he is, produced in you. It's going to be as he is, so are you in this world, right? Hallelujah. And, and so we bear witness and show unto you that eternal life. So if you have life, you can give life. If you have Jesus, you can reveal Jesus. That's a revelation. I'll get into more of that in a minute. How many know that you can give Jesus? You can just speak because he is the same. I mean, he gets on your voice. And, and show unto you that which was uh, that witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Can you get into that realm? You can. Every one of us, we can get in this realm. Paul said it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, I think, or 6. There, He says, I don't even want to know anything among you guys. He didn't want to know. He just wanted to know Jesus Christ and Him crucified so so the people's faith would not be in the wisdom of men because it really can't help you that much you know um, it's not eternal right it's temporal but that uh, your faith wouldn't be in the wisdom of men but in the demonstration of the spirit with power and that's what we need to see we need to see the power in the blood right when when he spoke when he ministered it was a different deal, wasn't it? It really was. And we're starting to see that more and more here in our, in our body. And you guys are rising up. It's exciting. It really is. And so these things we write unto you, that your joy may be full. And uh, wow. And then this is the message that we have heard of him and declare unto you. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Hear that. And so, wow. Talks about it in the book of John too, right? John chapter 1, it says, In him is life, and that life is the light of men, right? That is the light that we're to walk in. The entrance of his word gives light, right? You want to see the word, you got to walk in the light, right? You got to decree the word, you got to speak the word, you got to believe like the word is true and, and enter into that. You've got to come against everything in the natural, the carnal, to step into the light. And you're going to see the Holy Spirit right there. This is part of your covenant. You can do this. How many believe that we can do this? Hallelujah. And then it goes on to say, This is the message that we have heard of him, declaring to you, God is light, and in him is no darkness. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. And that's the problem. Oh man, that's a word right there for the church. That's a strong word right there. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, right? What does it say? We have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Jesus, the testimony of Jesus removes sin. It, it doesn't just cleanse it, it destroys it in your life. And that's why we need to have a heart that's not for what God wants, right? We, I mean, we're, we're not to let sin rule in our mortal body. Isn't that what it says in Scripture? Doesn't it say the, the wages of sin in John six, uh, Romans 6.23 is, is death, right? But the gift of God is eternal life, right? Through Jesus Christ, His Son. 
His blood is speaking eternally. There's, there's a witness of his blood, but the witness of his blood, uh, please hear this, the witness of his blood bears witness when we live by faith, when we step out. If you don't try to overcome something, you know, in, you know by his grace, if you don't draw close to him, you're not going to know, know what I'm talking about. I mean, please hear me. People can know verses. They can have them memorized. You can quote, the, again, the 23rd Psalm, but if you don't know the author, it's not going to do you a whole lot of good. And, and Anybody know what I'm talking about? When you know him, it says in James 4, 7, it says, Submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. It says, Draw close to God. He'll draw close to you. And that's the problem. We haven't got close enough to the Lord. Not you, maybe, but a lot. I'm just speaking in general. I'm looking in the mirror, too. I've got areas of my life. But when you draw close to the Lord, when you, when you start eating the Word and breathing the Word and living the Word, it changes you, right? I see that new sound in you, too. Haven't you seen that? Man, praise the Lord. I mean, there is just something... Tell them what happened when you first started coming to our church about, I don't know, how many years ago was that? Not that many years ago. About seven years ago, you came in and we were meeting at the, at the, the double tree there. And what did, what did you think? There was something in you that did, you couldn't hardly stand to be in the, mo in the room, right? It wasn't because of, of me, per se. It's because people were praising the Lord, and there were some people really going after the kingdom. And you guys couldn't even stay in there. I remember you guys all got up and left. I thought, wow, hope they come back. <laughs> and they did. They came back. And... That's awesome. And there's been some transformation. It didn't happen all at once, though, right? Well, kind of like you had to go through a lot of stuff to get free. To get free but the, the truth set you free, right? And we're, she's starting to learn this. That, you know what? Just like Jesus said when he was tempted of the devil, how many believe you're going to be tested too? And it says, man shall not live by bread alone, bread and water alone, but by every word that proceeds out. There needs to be a continual... Uh, word coming out of our life, right? We got to put it in, and we got to eat that word, right? And uh, we got to eat of His body, eat a drink of His blood. There needs to be something of Jesus everywhere we go. We need to continue in the Word, and then we shall know the truth, right? We shall be disciples, and we shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. As many as are led by the Spirit of the Lord, they are the sons of God, right? And it's just that simple. You've got to draw close. Hallelujah. And, and a lot of people don't draw close because there's something stopping them. Please hear that. I mean, maybe I'm speaking to somebody watching too. You know, what is it that's keeping you from your call? What is it? Could it be that really is an adversary that has made inroads in your life that need to be dealt with? Maybe there's something that, you know, I mean, please hear me. A lot of the church... They're, they are making compromises to the Word of God, and they've even, I mean, the world is relabeling what God calls sin and relabeling it and making it social, socially acceptable, but is it? I mean, whatever form it is, right? And uh, 
I mean, God is God. It, he is the same. And we need to realize that He is a holy God. We're called to be holy even as He is holy. And there's no other way we can do this except by grace. The power of His blood is atoning power on the cross. And He wants us to, to awaken, please hear me, to the power of covenant. The power of the witness of His blood. Bearing witness in our spirit that we are children of God. How many believe that? I mean, he did on the cross and he says it was finished. It was finished, right? It is finished. I mean, you have access into this realm to his throne through by his blood into this realm to receive grace in your time of need, divine ability, right? Empowerment to deal with the devil and to be free and to partake of his divine nature. Hallelujah. So... But we got to rise up. We got to. We got to want to do this. And a lot of people don't, because there's something else that stopped us. We just maybe have yet to renew our mind. You know, we need the washing of the water of the blood, right, uh, of the word. And anyways, it's a lot of stuff. But I mean, the power of sanctification is is something that's ongoing, isn't it? Jesus was sanctified so that we might be sanctified, right? Hallelujah. The blood. Can we just say the blood? <laughs> oh man, I'm telling you, there's power in the blood. One time we had a deliverance service in Stockton. We had a deliverance meeting and we just started talking about the blood. You guys were there. <laughs> and there was some manifestations. So we started speaking on the blood and and all kinds of crazy things started happening. People started manifesting the demonic didn't like the, the blood of Jesus. So it's something when you just talk about the blood or the name of Jesus, or the word of God, it just, the enemy, he starts shaking in his feet, in, in, his, in his boots, right? And that's what the Lord wants to instill in, in you. He wants that new sound to start coming forth. And we can do that, right? And so I just want to encourage you, part of faith is, is overcoming. Yes, it's, it's good. We get to walk in love and peace, but it's also displacing the enemy and and replacing, you know, that place with the with the life of Jesus in our life. Hallelujah. Okay, let's just I'm gonna have to start winding down here. Oops, I guess I gotta read a, a few more verses here. Verse seven says if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So we need to be continually be walking in this place of humility and, and, right? We need the Lord. We need Him everywhere we go. That's the problem. A lot of people think they're this and that. They don't need Him and they don't know their true estate. God wants to awaken us to who we are impoverished state of being. We need to... We need to we need Jesus. We need to put on Christ, right? Hallelujah. It goes on to say, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And, and so notice again what the Apostle is saying here. We need to know the Lord. We need to get close to the Lord. And, and there's something about dealing with our sin, admitting uh, to him and we, we can try to fight the devil all day long after the flesh eventually we're going to get worn out right anybody know what that's like but get into faith get into uh, the covenant and you start to see the witness of God you don't have to make this happen God is faithful and just to cleanse you to remove these things whatever it may be I mean we're all dealing with this every one of us and you're going to see the power, the witness of the blood. Hallelujah. That's what I want to talk about as I close. Just touch on it a little bit again today. The witness of the blood. The testimony of the blood. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You want to see that. It's connected to the blood. It's connected to the, it's connected to the covenant that we have with him in his blood. He, didn't he say... In Scripture, Matthew 26, 28, this is, this is my body broken for you, and this is my blood 
uh, you know, shed for you. This is a new testament in my blood, right? Doesn't it say in scripture, Leviticus 17, 11, the life of the body is in the, the blood. And his life was pure, holy, poured out, is eternal, and is eternally speaking for us in the heavenly realm right now everywhere we go. We don't have to make the witness of, of God. I mean, God watches over his own word to perform it. He really does. And he wants to awaken us to this awesome reality. And we're seeing it. We're starting to see it. So flip over to 1 John 5. And I'm just going to just touch on it a little light today. I've talked about this in the past. This is one of those revelations. There are, there are witnesses in the realm of the earth. And God wants us to bear witness. The reason why the apostle was able to bear witness and and that generation, the church, is because they were made one with the Lord. They were walking in that, that light, right? Jesus was manifesting all over the place through them. And the devil was, uh, you know, he, he didn't want to, if he knew what was going to happen, he would have never crucified the Lord, right? <laughs> it's too late. There's a whole bunch of us now, right? Oh, man. And God is trying to stir us up into this, this revelation. What? Oh, we got more angels with us. Oh, thank God for the angels of the Lord. Hearken to the... That's right. This guy was preaching on, on angels this week, on releasing the angels, you know. And, and I'm telling you, when you step into this realm and you start decreeing what God has said, what God's putting on your heart to do and to say... There, it, the Holy Spirit is working and the angels of God are right there on that word bringing it forth and uh, the, we, need, we need the angels there's a mighty army we heard the word, the prophetic word, right? being arrayed right now and we are in a new season how many just feel a witness that this is something new that we're entering into that God is raising us up he's, he's imparting or instilling in your life you know, that greater reality of who you really are. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. You are made the righteousness of God in Him. And when that starts to manifest, it, it just changes everything. It really does. Hallelujah. I want to see more change. And we're starting to see it. Hope I'm stirring you guys up today. So 1 John chapter 5. Notice again, verse 4. Who is... Whosoever is born again overcomes the world. If so, if you've been born again, it says you're you're overcoming, right? Hallelujah! And we we're we're learning how. You already know this, but there's a connection with confession and the blood of Jesus and decreeing, right, and acting on the word that brings Jesus into operation in our life. Lay hands on the sick. They laid hands on the sick. And uh, they cast out devils, and it says the Lord was working the, with them, confirming the word with signs following, right? We don't have to look for signs. They just follow us, right? Don't get me wrong. If you don't, if you don't see anything, I got around Chester Smith in the beginning. I saw great manifestations of God working through Chester Smith in his healing deliverance services in Stockton. And then something happened and started, you know, it, it, can, it can, if we can find... Uh, what what those signs are pointing to, you know, there really is a God, and uh, He. This is for everybody. You can get into this, like Dave did. Hallelujah. I'm kind of pumping you up a little too much here, aren't I? Okay. It's okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. We have good high expectations for you, brother. What's that? Yeah. All right. So there, there it is. This is a victory that overcomes faith, right? Hallelujah. Who is he that overcomes? It says, verse 5, He that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Notice the connection there. We just have to believe, right? And we can overcome addiction. We can overcome all this stuff. Jesus says, you know, to the disciples, they want to know how they might do the works of God. He said, just believe in the... In the one who the Father sends. 
And that's what I, t I try to tell people sometimes. Just put your hand on them and believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then you'll see the witness of God bear witness. He'll show up. And what he's already done starts to manifest. And just you don't even have to speak the word sometimes. Just believe. And you see God's presence just deal with things. Isn't that the truth? Just step into alignment with the word. Okay, verse 6. This is he that came by water and blood. There's a revelation here. Even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is a spirit that bears witness because the spirit is truth. It's one of the three witnesses. And I'm suggesting to you, that's why we have to draw close to the, to the word. We have to know the word. And the words that he spoke, they're spirit and life. And you can't even know the truth apart from the spirit of truth. Because the, the truth, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the spirit is the spirit of truth, right? That's his job, is to lead us, guide us, establish us in the truth. Establish in you that which already is. Greater reality, right? Devil's trying to give us another reality, but God has already given us everything. It's already established. It says there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, right? And these three are one. And Jesus was walking in that realm, right? He is part of that realm. And He's given us access into that realm. He's given us God sent him so that we might have life, right? Eternal life. So we wouldn't perish from our sins and to deliver us. And he's given us his glory, right? So that we might be one with him and walking in that light, that, that fellowship. And we've got to be living and eating and breathing the word. Can we do it? Through Jesus we can, right? All things through Christ. And it goes on to say there are three that bear witness in the earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one, or they are one. And there's a witness of one of the witnesses that God, the blood of Jesus, will bear witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. You'll have the witness just by believing. And if you don't believe, you're not going to have the witness. And that's why we can, give, we can give Jesus everywhere we go because we have the witness. We know. When you know, it's like it opens the heavens. That knowledge, that knowing Jesus, it puts an open heaven on your life. Everywhere you can go, you can release the kingdom everywhere you go. It can become like the wind, right? Isn't that what he says in John 3? We're supposed to be of the, born of the water and the spirit. Be like the wind even coming to... Yeah. How many are okay with that? Well, there's a wind of the Spirit that's going to blow across this land. It's going to transform it. I'll just speak that out right now. I believe it is. It says, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. This is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. He that believes on the Son of God, this is the witness, has the witness in himself he that believes not has made him a liar because he has not believed in the record that God gave of his son. And this is the record. This is just this simple. This is a record that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. He's made it so simple. And if we'll just believe him, take him at his word, childlike faith, you're going to see God bear witness. The power of his blood will start bearing witness. You'll become part of that group in Revelation 12, 11 that overcomes by the word of your testimony. So I want to encourage you right now, this is the season we're in that God's calling us into this higher realm of fellowship. This is what he's burning in my spirit. But we have to, we have to overcome. We have, and, and the way we overcome is just by believing Jesus stepping into it, believe that he has cleansed us, that there's therefore now no condemnation, right? Those that walk after the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has been set free.
from the law of sin and death, right? And that, you know what? There's a greater reality. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And we just need to start believing in it and acting like it's true. And, and you, it will be. It will be. No matter what, just keep believing the word. Hope that this has blessed you today. You just got to catch this by the Spirit. And when it does hit you, it'll change everything. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I think I'm going to close there. Hallelujah. So, Bob, would you close us out today? Could you come on up, brother? Hallelujah. Bob's one of the elders in our group, and I really appreciate him. And we want to pray. And, and Bob, if you would just lead us in prayer, too. If anybody has something that you're dealing with, you don't have to raise your hand, but just give it to the Lord right now. And just, I mean, submit yourself to God. Resist these things. And it's going to produce something of that witness of Jesus' blood, the victory at Calvary in your life. Hallelujah. Just, yeah. Thank you, Brother Kevin. Yeah. And we all know that the blood of Jesus Christ is where it's all at. If you want to get forgiveness from sins, if you want to go to heaven, if you want to live a righteous life here upon earth, <clears throat> then the blood of Jesus Christ is the way that we have to go. All the reason that there's no there's no no worry for us in this world. We have a future all made out for us because we believe and uphold the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. I enjoyed this sermon, Brother Kevin. That was a good sermon. Thank you. I think so. I wonder if there's anyone in here tonight that you feel your need for prayer, you feel your need that you need to have more of the Lord in your life. That somewhere down the road you've kind of drifted aside and, and you're not walking the way that you think that you ought to walk with God. If you're here tonight and you feel that way, then this is a place to come to find Jesus put him in your heart, to keep him there, and live with him. Is there anyone here tonight that's like that? Well, perhaps everyone here is saved, and that's, that's, a, that's a great thing, that everyone is saved and, and know the Lord. So I wonder tonight then if, if you know, I think what we'll do, Brother Kevin, is we'll take the offering up. We haven't taken the offering up yet. Brother Len, if anybody needs some prayer, Our Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. That you will bless these people that are here tonight. Bless their efforts, Lord, and bless their finances. We pray that you will help them to help the church walk forward and be responsible, Lord, for what we have from you. We pray that you bless this offering, Lord. Bless everyone that gives and those that can't give as well. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hi, I'm Kathy, and I'm here at Church of the Harvest. And um, for the last few weeks, I've been really going through um, some spiritual um, uh, fighting, fighting the enemy. Um, and I have seen literally going through each of my kids, my husband, myself. And um, last week I came, got prayer, and... Um, Genevieve literally could see like being stopped up of the joy um, and that it wasn't able to flow and so I got prayer and got that removed and um, this past week just keep pressing into the Lord and today came back um, and got some prayer and God is faithful God gave me that joy back I began to laugh um, God is faithful and I am just claiming the victory, claiming victory over my family, over everything that His will is going to be done. And I just praise Him. I thank Him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Okay, my name is Donna, and I am so blessed to be a part of this ministry. When I was in my rock bottom place, with, that was jail for me. Uh, I was a drug addict, alcoholic, and a thief, and I cried out to a God I didn't know. And Jesus showed up, and uh, he showed up in the form of a woman. And she came, and she introduced me to Jesus, and it was then that God transformed my life. And now uh, the woman, she introduced me to her church, and that's Church of the Harvest. And I said, okay, I'll show up and I'll give my testimony. And uh, come to find out this is where the Lord wants me. This is where the Lord has planted me, and this is where I have truly grown. The Lord has just changed me. I was once a caterpillar, and I've transformed into this butterfly by the grace of God. Um, miracle after miracle, God has just transformed uh, my my criminal record, I don't have one. God has given me a new business and uh, he's keeping me busy. He's given me a couple of vehicles. He supplies my needs daily. Uh, he uses me in ministry. He, he takes me out on the streets and I'm able to share what God's given me. He wants me to share and so I talk about Jesus everywhere I go. Any opportunity that I have to share about the love of Jesus is, is every opportunity that I take because God is good. God has power and he has changed me. And and so if he could change me, he could change anybody. And so I encourage you, if you're struggling or if you uh, need Jesus, I mean, this is where I come at Church of the Harvest to be filled, to uh, hear the word and be prayed for, and miracles happen. And so uh, praise God for Church of the Harvest. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Gary Palm, and I uh, attend the Church of the Harvest. And... Uh, pastor was talking about the, the blood, the power of the blood of Jesus' blood, and so he called me forward, and I came forward, and uh, I, 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 I stretched out my hands, and he started praying over me, and uh, I, was, I already had the joy of the Lord on me, and I, I started to receive what God uh, meant for me, and uh, so as he uh, anointed my hands uh, in, with uh, oil right here in here, uh, I felt the power of God come upon me, but I also felt the, the heat, you know, God is a consuming fire, and I just felt the, the power of God come on me, and that, that heat just continued to radiate, and, and so a uh, pastor asked me what happened, I said, I just felt God touch me, okay, and so I know that, I always knew that I was a child of God, but God just wanted to speak to me, you know, in a physical way and spiritual at the same time, and so... Um, I believe that I have received some kind of a, a special anointing, but also healing, and also so that I can transfer this to when I pray over somebody, and if they will allow me to lay my hand or hands on them, so if they're sick, they'll, they'll recover. So it's just really exciting, and um, God is for real. I can, I can testify to that. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Amen.